A motion by Helmut. Welcome to Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kennedy. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township. You know those government people that make laws and regulations that affect you out there. That's right. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Addison Township or Oxford Township, these are the people that you went and elected. And we'll get that opportunity on, get this, November 6th. Yes. <laughs> you got it right. Twice in a row. <laughs> this is so, a new number. If you don't have an absentee ballot, you know, line up at that yeah. voting voting station, and you might even right. see Elgin. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Precinct 5. I'm the chairperson for Precinct 5 in Oxford uh, Township. That's right. Well, if you didn't attend that meeting, it could have been a taxing situation. Right. <laughs> and did you ever notice that there's humor that either sinks to the bottom or bubbles to the top? That's right, but it's never in the middle. And never in the middle. <laughs> but rumors are always out there. Rumors are everywhere. Especially when this guy's around. Trust That's me. Right. That's right. That's our life. It is. Okay. Well, and what he says is mostly true. Mostly true. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It is. Yeah, it could be. Might be. Would be. Anyway. Enhanced. Enhanced, right. <laughs> so let's talk about the Village of Oxford uh, Village Council meeting. And then we're going to go to the Oxford Community School Board, which we haven't really talked about the school board too much, but we're going to today. How Was the council that? meeting a special meeting? The council meeting was not a special meeting. It was a regular meeting okay. for September 25th. Okay. And uh, the school board meeting was held on September 25th also. So you had to be uh, hmm, a clone to visit both okay. at the same time. So anyway, the village of Oxford, uh, the president of the board is uh, Sue Basardet until uh, actually after the election. She's not running again, so... She won't be on the village council. I think there's three open positions, or three, are, that is to say, three positions that will be there having are, candidates to right. run. Right. And it says pick three. <laughs> so, not, not four. <laughs> not four. But if you're a write in, if you, you got registered as a write in, then you could be a write in. But otherwise, there's three people to vote for in the village council. Um, Suba started as the president. Uh, Eric Dolan is the vice president. Um, uh, Maureen Helmuth serves on this board as she has for a number of years. And David Bailey, who was absent in this particular meeting, uh, also serves on the board. And, of course, Joe Frost, who is the newest uh, member of that particular council. Is there a difference between the pro, uh, vice president and a president pro tem? Uh, vice president and president pro, uh, pro tem would be the same thing. Okay. Yeah, depends on what part of the country you're in, which part of the village you're in. Michigan goes both ways. <laughs> <laughs> could, could be, yeah, dual purpose. Anyway, uh, also Joe Madur, who was the um, village manager, he was there, and uh, Terry Onika, who's a new clerk, oh. and she was there recording. So all those people were present, except for Dave Bailey, who was excused, and he was out because he was ill at this oh. particular meeting. So they did the pledge, they got the preliminaries out of the way. The agenda, uh, Eric Dolan wanted to add a line which under new business for correspondence from assistant manager, which would be Drew Benson. Right. And we'll talk more about that as we get down the line, shall we? Mm -hmm. Presentation, no presentations that particular day on the uh, 25th. Public uh, hearing, none. Okay, moving along pretty good. Consent agenda, Oxford um, ban boosters would be one of the issues that was going to be on the agenda. And bills for the amount of $113,109.14. Did you catch that? Yeah, it comes in and goes out. It comes in. It's got, a friend of mine was uh, German. He said, you know, there's two things. There's Kazins and there's Kazouts. And he was electronics. They should guy. balance. Yeah, he said, if you got no Kazins, <laughs> you got no Gazouts. So anyway, he's right. If you got more Gazouts than you got Kazins, you're in trouble. You're in deep trouble. Yep, <laughs> up to your knees in trouble, probably. Anyway, um, unfinished business. Uh, Drew Benson, he brought up the uh, second reading of the uh, adoption of the proposal for ordinance amendments. And uh, they had discussed that before. And that regards the enforcement addition of the International Property Maintenance Code and the International Fire Codes. And they had to be brought up to date. So they did that. And the next thing they had was consideration of special event applications. Now, which is night out? is coming up, and that date is October 26, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Is that the soup and stroll? No, nope. that's not the soup and stroll. What is it? Used to be kind of the soup and stroll, I think, but not anymore. It's, it's going to be called the Witch's Night Out. Witch's Night Out? That means bring your witch out. <laughs> uh, Don't keep her in. 
you could be bring treading, you could be treading on dangerous ground there. <laughs> if you have a witch, bring her out. If you don't, leave her at home. I think you should stop now. Right. <laughs> but it could be a witch guy too. I see. What do they call it? witches that are guys? Um, guy witches. There, there's a name, but yeah, I can't there think is. of it right now. Yeah, I can't either. Uh, take a note. Put it underneath that stack right, over there, right, yellow right. jab. <laughs> okay. So anyway, new business. Um, new business they did talk about by the uh, Oxford High School junior class <clears throat> wanted to use the building that the police are housing their vehicles in right now next to the administrative building. The one that's doomed? The one that's doomed is gonna, gonna fall down. I was gonna say collapse. It's gonna be taken down and then they're gonna make parking spaces out of it, Yay. I guess. <laughs> I, I think they'll put little meters in there all along there. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they'll do that, but you never know, this could be a rumor. Would you like to spread that one? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, we probably have pitchforks and fire at our door here if we're not careful. Anyway, Eric Dolan says, oh, no, wait, wait a minute now, hold it. He says, uh, I'm not in agreement with this request. He says, uh, we're going to establish a precedent. He said, we just uh, vacated um, Alcoholics Anonymous from using that building. And uh, Joel Madour, he wanted to make sure that he was aware that they did approve the last meeting, I think, or the meeting before that, for aerobics to have classes there up to December. So if they're allowing that, why can't, couldn't they allow these kids to do their, um, their um, they're gonna do a float in there, build a float. A float, mm -hmm. okay. How they gonna do it. They're well, gonna they float the it right Christmas in Christmas parade or what? No, this is gonna for be the for the homecoming. homecoming. Yep. Okay. The, they're gonna float the parade and it's gonna be in the homecoming. So anyway, well, after, as long as there's walls, right? As long <laughs> as there's walls. After quite a conversation with this, everybody voted down uh, Dolan and said, "Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. It's not a, not a problem. Let the kids do it." A uh, question came up: What about insurance, Any? He said, "Well, the school is going to handle the insurance. They said the kids would be protected, you know, and the building would be protected and so forth." They do. Okay. It. So that took care of that, didn't it? I guess. <laughs> I guess. Okay. There will be a float coming out of that building. Anyway, uh, it was approved, and uh, next thing they talked about was a repair on well number three uh, and possible cleaning. Uh, now there's, I think, four wells within the village. Is that just reg regular maintenance? Um, well, I understand the, uh, the pump is, a, is an issue. They want to pull the pump up and take a look at it and see if it can be rebuilt or if they need to replace it. Are they losing pressure or what? They're losing water. The water's not coming up. <laughs> Oh, that could hey, be an issue. That's an issue. <laughs> right. So anyway, so they need to look at that. And there's a couple of companies that had uh, put bids in. One was Peerless Company that put in a bid um, for this particular project. The other one is called Northern Pump. And between the two, Northern Pump is a local company, at least a Michigan company. The other one is out-of-state company. And there is a discussion about this. Uh, why wouldn't uh, they hire a Michigan company rather than an outside company to come in and do this. I think there was a financial test for that, wasn't there? Well, there is a, a financial test. I don't know if they use that test. I was responsible or partly responsible for that particular process to uh, take place in the console for, yeah. the, I mean, for the village. The, the impetus is to buy local unless local uh, is pro pro price prohibitive. As absolutely. They say. And let's talk more about that when we come back okay. right after this. Welcome back to my men's fight minute. I almost blew that one out, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Elgin Nichols, and we're going to talk about what went on at the Village Council. And we're talking about... And I'm Dave Kenny, and I'm going to listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to pump water. <laughs> we're thinking about pumping water. At least uh, the Village is trying to think about pumping water. There are two bids. The bid for Peerless came in at $15,068, and Northern came in at $15,702. A $644 difference between okay. the two. We said that Northern is a local company... Um, Peerless is, a, is an outside, you know, out-of-state company. And uh, the total, this will only cover the maintenance involved. They have a budget of 30000 to actually repair the well, should okay. it need it. So they're going to 
bring the pump up, as I said before. They're going to check it. If parts need to be replaced, they'll replace it. Well, when this came up, um, Eric Dolan says, I don't care if it's local or it's state company. He says, if it's lower in terms of price, he says, I'm all for it. He says, uh, but that but that goes against what the village voted on several years ago to emphasize buying local if it was practical. It does. Now, um, Joel Frost he agreed that we should go with local people. He put his input in. Uh, the other people on the council didn't go along with Joel by the time it was all done, and they voted for making this decision to go with Peerless, outside company. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, how did that work? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, oh. uh, we, we were just talking about this off camera and the cost to do business in the state of Michigan. It has a reference in the fact that you're hiring em people from Michigan who pay taxes in Michigan, that kind of thing. And, and who we're will having spend that money in Michigan? Who will spend money in Michigan rather than take the mother load and leave? <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. Now, they've actually used both these companies in the past, and Don Brantley. Um, said that both companies were pretty decent companies. And, but I think it was about six, seven, eight years ago, they did change over to Northern Pump and from, uh, from the, uh, uh, the other firm. So anyway, that's where that one ended. Um, we did talk about the bids. Joe Frost was the only no vote in this thing, and they, they passed it. Uh, MDOT annual permit personnel. Um, they have assigned two people, Joe Madur and, and Don Brantley, to be contacts for MDOT. You know, for any permits annual for, permit yeah, for, one. for permits along the highway. Oh. You know, so uh, they have to be approved by MDOT, and they just wanted a contact. They have two contacts now. Speaking of MDOT, that MDOT. train is coming down the tracks, isn't it? That train it? is coming. I can see it down, coming down the track, and I can see the smoke. Can I can it? see that train yeah. coming, it's coming, coming down the track. Oh, man, <laughs> did I open this box. <laughs> but anyway, the, the 20, or two, 2020 is the year that is designated. However, if they get more money, somehow, dig down your pocket. If they get more money, it could be sooner. And uh, don't and if jump they get off less the boat money, yet. It could be later. Could be. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so anyway, so in this thing, uh, the next question that came up was outdoor or, uh, ordinance report for merchandise that people put out outside of their business. It seems like that since 2009, Suba Sardis said that this has been an ongoing project for the C1 district. Um, C2 and C4 and um, the other districts within the, the village have been approved to use outside, you know, with ordinance control. But C1 is the only difference. And uh, Chuck Snyder is in that particular district. C1 being mm -hmm. right on Main Street? Right on Main Street, Washington Street. And the only. With sidewalks? With sidewalks, yep. <laughs> and actually, Chuck Snyder, who's an investor within the uh, village here, and other areas too, uh, said this never really came to light until he opened his business, uh, <laughs> you know, and had outside displays. And he said a lot of his displays are heavy, and he said you can't move them inside, as the other uh, code requirements that people bring them inside. So anyway, so it's a uh, situation that it, they need to resolve. Mostly this would be the, the old funeral home, wouldn't it? Mm, it, it is. Yep. Okay. And it actually be has to be uh, pushed forward by the planning commission as to what direction they want to go and the consultants. But uh, Helmuth made a motion that uh, a moratorium be put on it, that no tickets, excuse me, be given out until, you know, this has a chance to be reviewed and brought forward in, in terms of either a permit situation or through an ordinance situation. Well, since it's been going on since 2009, it's been called dipping it in and wringing it out. Suba Sardis <laughs> says it's high time to figure this out. <laughs> Get it taken care of, and she's right. So anyway, that's uh, what they did discuss at the uh, village council meeting. Uh, Chuck Snyder gave a, a pretty interesting account as to what went on um, with the process as far as he, where he's at, how tickets were given out, and of course um, how planning you know, needs to deal with the uh, permit side of it, and he thinks permit is the way to go. And actually, I agree with uh, Chuck Snyder. I think that's a logical way, but let's see what happens, shall we? Uh, pay, you know, pay attention to this uh, minutes by minute because down the line you know, we'll be reporting on that as well. Well, communications. all the cards could get shuffled after November. All right. The <laughs> communications issue that uh, was put on the uh, docket by Mr. Dolan involves uh, Drew... Um, uh, Pearson. Pier not Pearson. 
Andrew Benson. Benson. <laughs> they both okay. said. <laughs> they both said at the same time. You know, did you those get the blank? Those semi-dead neurons kicking in yeah. at once. <laughs> right. right. Drew, Drew Benson, who, by the way, has done a great job for both the DDA and the Village Council. He's going to be leaving. And he's going to be leaving, actually, as we do our broadcast, October 4th. Yep. Um, and he's going to Troy, Michigan. Lucky people in Troy are going to get Drew Benson. He's going better. Going to miss him here. Okay, next one we're going to talk about the Oxford Community School Board meeting that they had on September 25th. And it was held at Leonard Elementary uh, School. And the people on that board are the President Donnelly, uh, Brasington is the Vice President, um, Stepik is the secretary. Uh, Guthrie serves as the treasurer, and trustees are Bailey, uh, De Alessandro, and Schaefer. Administration that were present, Tim Throne, the supervisor of the uh, school system, superintendent. Um, there's Weaver, Pass, um, Barna, and of course, Sweat. It was pretty well packed uh, as far as the auditorium where it was held. They did the pledge, they uh, covered the consent agenda, and by the way, that included the bills in the amount of $4,680,000, or $80,288.50. That's $4,680,288.24. Far from petty cash. Far okay. from right. petty cash. Uh, very good people on this board. Uh, they have, all have the same interest, and that is taking, make sure that your kids have the best education possible and that your uh, teachers get the tools required to do their job. So very interesting conversations that they had along the line here. You can catch more by going to OCCTV.org. Clicking on programs. Yep, and look for the uh, Oxford Community School Board meeting that was held. Or you, can, you can probably catch it on YouTube as well. YouTube? Uh, mm -hmm. That's true. So there's a lady, um, Lauren uh, Kosho, I think her name is, and she's the Leonard Elementary Theater Club uh, pres uh, presentation that she uh, she gave. And she has uh, kids anywhere from kindergarten to fifth grade that have put on performances that really are really good. These kids are have done a great job at it. One of them was Lion King that they did just recently. Wow. I've seen it at the high school here. So anyway, uh, very talented kids. And if you want to catch more on the presentation, check uh, the website again on OCCTV.org. Uh, Tim Throne uh, did talk about the testing scores compared to other schools, discussed that portion of it, and also digital imaging technologies approval. was looking for that um, approval for that particular class, and it was approved. The other thing that came up is a, a purchase of a thousand Chromebooks, which is uh, science books. Uh, no. For the, what is it? They're laptops. Okay, that's right. <laughs> Laptop science, 1,000 of them. Well, it can be anything. <laughs> yeah, right. And in those, sci in, in those um, uh, laptops is books. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And anyway, the amount for that, it was approved, was $300,593.60. And they had the monies for that, by the way. It's in what they call the sinking fund. I would say with that kind of money going, it is sinking. Maybe it won't With be With your vast enough. experience, can you define what a sinking fund is? A sinking fund is where you put money into it. It's kind of like your bank account, where it just I disappears. <laughs> Nothing else gets put into it. It just right. gets down to the bottom, yeah, and that's fixed, all she wrote. Yeah, they have a fixed amount. <laughs> it's called sinking fund. And that's what it's, what it's known as. How about that one, huh? Like the bank of dad. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you more when we come back after this, folks. Hi, this is Dave Kenny. You can catch me on Auto Talk and Science in the News as part of Oxford News this week. You can catch us Monday through Friday at 12 noon, 6.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. Also, you can catch us on the weekend at 12 noon and 11 p.m. on Saturday and at 6.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. on Sunday. See you there. Welcome back, Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about, <laughs> you are Dave Kenny, aren't you? And we are talking about the Oxford Community School Board meeting that they had the other day. And the uh, next thing that came up was financial audits. And uh, according to Tim Throne, the audits went great. Uh, some really nice things were sent, said about the people who are maintaining the financials. So that, that, that's a good sign. Student services, October 3rd, uh, counting children. Let me see. Where'd Johnny go? <laughs> hey, he was here yesterday. 
<laughs> no, anyway, they're counting children. They have to okay. have account for the school. Well, yeah, but that, that has a really definite effect on how much how much you get money the school gets from the state. From the state, it. you're right. Hmm. Well, want... show up <laughs> <laughs> and find Johnny. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> closing report. Uh, Tim Throne gave a pretty good uh, um, report on various. Uh, issues that came up with the school system and direction that the school system is going. A uh, letter from the state of Michigan. Uh, Tim Throne brought this one up and uh, apparently a resident uh, sent a letter to Michigan, um, to the state of Michigan, uh, saying that the school in Oxford was boarding students there. And so the regulating group sent a letter back to... In the form of a dorm? Yeah, dormitory, yes. That's a day late and a dollar short, isn't it? It, it is. Well, <laughs> that's it. Uh, so they, the, the state sent regulation requirements for Oxford schools uh, <sighs> saying that uh, to operate a boarding school that you, have the, you must be able to board them, you need to care for them, you need to give instruction, and they have to be less than 16 years of age. And if you qualify for any of these things, then you better be paying for a permit so that you're going to get. Response? License. Never mind. Well, the permit was this is outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what came up is the letter was actually issued by and sent to the state of Michigan without consulting with the school system at all by Kelly Rossner Meyer. And this upset a lot of the board members here and they said well why didn't she contact the supervisor who's always got his door open willing to talk to anybody if there's an issue <clears throat> so there was a lot said about that but there's not going to be a dorm is there there is not and as a matter of fact uh, uh, superintendent uh, throne throne yeah that guy he sent a letter back to the state stating emphatically no you know it is not true so then the other board members, they had an opportunity to speak after that. And uh, board members discussed about the uh, uh, boarding school letter. And, uh, Dale San uh, Alessandro, he said that if anything, he said over the years that he's been on this board, transparency has been of the utmost importance you know, to him and the members on this board. And that uh, these issues should have been discussed with the superintendent of the school, Tim Throne. But all of that came about through uh, the previous superintendent Skilling. Yeah. Uh, and he was, I forget what the name of the Chinese. Uh, Wei Ming. Wei Ming uh, mm -hmm. school system. There. I helped you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Wei Ming. And they were talking about putting in a. Right, but that was years ago. Oh, yes, it was. Right. Has nothing to do with this. And actually, uh, Kelly Rossner had a group called the 21 uh, Club, which a lot of different residents participate in in order to shoot down this Wei Ming thing. And it's probably a good thing that that happened, but I think there, there comes a point here that uh, a resident can use the legal system only so far uh, it, without hurting the school system. For example, Chairman Donnelly on the end said that, uh, what's interesting is uh, Kelly Rossner Meyer over the last year and a half or so has used the FOIA request system. Freedom of Information Act? Yes, 200 to 300 times. Wow. And he said, you have to have administrative people. You're required by the government to provide truth of information uh, to that particular request. And he said it, it ties up people, which means money over a period of time. And he said, um, this has cost the school system a great deal of funds that could have been used you know, for the school system for Oxford. And he was very upset over it. And he said, uh, in two years, finally, he said in two years, he said he hasn't seen Kelly Rossner Meyer attend a single board meeting for the school board. So uh, they got their licks in on this. Unfortunately, uh, Kelly Rossner wasn't at this meeting. I would have liked to have seen what she had to say you know, during this uh, uh, confrontation that these board members were having at the time. Of course, that letter could have been sitting on someone's desk in, in, <laughs> in the state of Michigan for a long period of time before someone noticed it, too. And now you're talking about the Senate government. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> that letter could have been there for a long time. Who knows how long that letter is there? <laughs> you don't want to get into that one, do we? Okay. It's probably... Uh, be like one of yellow, my notes that's yellow. turning yellow. <laughs> more yellow than yours is. It's, oh, yeah, look what I discovered. <laughs>
<laughs> so anyway, someone should write a letter. <laughs> right. And what's interesting with this other one was school boards. Actually, the uh, township has encountered similar situations where um, Kelly uh, Rossner has requested freedom of information, and it's cost. Uh, last estimate I heard was thirteen thousand dollars to you taxpayers out there. Wow. For this. Well. And when somebody uses the judicial system, uh, the legal system, you know, to make things happen or try to make things happen or try to control things, it's going to be very expensive, you know, uh, uh, process. So make sure it's a valid request. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, what's wrong with talking to people, right. you know? Talking to the people, the administrators, people that are in charge, you know? Uh, I don't, a lot I don't of money get it. All around. <laughs> you could. Yep. I learned a long time ago, watch out for the bullets. <laughs> it's not a good idea. But uh, so anyway, that, uh, that's what went on with the school board. Very interesting. If you want to hear more about the school board, as we said, go to OCCTV.org and click on programs. Programs. And everything will be in reverse date order. Or yes. you can go over to the little drop down menu, pick a subject, and everything will be there. And you don't have to wade through all that other stuff. And it would be drop down. Drop down gorgeous. <laughs> Drop down gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we did want to talk about the Oxford Village Planning Commission meeting, but I don't think we're going to get far into it at this point. Uh, the main issue on this was the C1 transition uh, district that we talked about, you know, for the uh, outside um, displays. Displays. That word, display. I was searching for that one. Oh, okay. Display. <laughs> okay. And I said, uh, you know, C14s. Um, is allowed, C2 is allowed, uh, the core district is allowed, but C1 is not. And they're working on that, and this was actually uh, set aside. Um, that will take more, more importance when MDOT comes through and redoes the downtown streets. That's true. Well, here, Jack Curtis says, hey, 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 over here. Ah, what about the uh, master plan <laughs> for this? <laughs> Does it say anything about the master plan? And they said, well, that's a good question, Jack. Uh, we'll have to look at that. We'll have to check that out. Glad you mentioned it. Check it out. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a duty for Jack. To, and Jack actually would chase after something like that to find out, too, um, because he serves on the, the Planning Commission. And uh, let's see, Chuck Snyder showed up for this meeting as well. Now, Chuck is all over the place. He wants to make sure that people know what's going on out there. And I know you folks do, too. So well, pay, Chuck is very well spoken. Right. Pay attention to minutes by minute. You'll find out what's going on, like hmm. what's coming up. What's coming up? We have meetings. On 10-15, uh, we have at 6 p.m. Addison Township Board of Trustees, and also at 6 p.m. the Village of Oxford Downtown Development Authority. On 12-16, uh, this is a 10-16, uh, at 7 o'clock uh, the Addison Township uh, Fire Board, and at 7 o'clock the Village of Oxford Planning Commission. At uh, 12, or it's, I kept writing 12, 10-17, at 3 o'clock the uh, Pollyann Trail will be meeting at Addison Township offices. Mm -hmm. And finally, on 1018 at 430, NOTA, which stands for? North Oakland Transportation Authority. Authority. Yep. Uh, we'll and be meeting at the Orion Township offices. Yep. No, no, I'm, I'm not on that board, but we are going to have a uh, Pollyann Trail? Poly Trail meeting coming up, which I'll be on that board. Until then, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Catch you next time right here on Minutes by Minute. See you then. <laughs>